the sanctuary. Thank you, Bobby, for playing Faith of Our Fathers. God of our fathers, sorry. <laughs> but it was wonderful. Filled the, you'll hear lots of nice little things today. It's the way of music. Um, welcome to worship. And I will start out with the prayers. Heather Kruger is recovering at home after her hospitalization. Trevor Tuman also is recovering at home after his surgery. Um, Norma said he had surgery, he's home doing well, and he's gonna be wearing a boot soon. So he's gonna be up and about too. Uh, please keep Sam Bullard in your prayers. Sam was called up. Uh, he's part of our National Guard, so he went in late last night to relieve some of the troops that were in Minneapolis. So he is um, actively deployed at the present time. Two updates on people on our prayer list. Ginny Perro's brothers. Gene Chesson uh, is home from the hospital after his recent surgery. He did wake up. He has cancer. Um, they were not able to get all of it. However, um, the doctors did not give him a very good prognosis. So please keep Gene in your prayers. And our other brother, G Glenn Leaders, he is in a special study um, that they're doing for him, and he's doing really well. So um, keep both of them in your prayers. They've been on our prayer list for quite a while. So um, that's all I have in the way of prayer list updates. On other announcements, um, Starla asked me to announce that the Tuesday, Thursday Bible study group for the first week of June will not be meeting this month. Um, Thursday mornings, we still have the Zoom Bible study, and if you're interested in joining, you can come anytime. Just let me know, and I'll send you a Zoom invitation, and uh, you can join us for that. We're reading the book of Acts. Um, the June newsletter is also available. Passed it out yesterday with the bulletins. Um, you can come and pick it up this coming Saturday if you like, or it'll be mailed out. Um, we're still following the governor's guidelines and slowly reopening the church. Starting this week, the church will be unlocked during the day for private, individual prayer. So we are allowed to have groups of 10 or less in the building. At the entrances, we ask that you use the hand gel, wear a face mask, and observe the six-foot distancing. So if you'd like to come into the building and have time for private prayer, please do so. Um, we don't have plans right now to resume group worship. There's a lot of restrictions that we have to follow. We'll talk about this at our next council meeting. We'll let you know as soon as we figure out what and how to do that safely. Um, otherwise, small groups, boards, committees can meet in the evenings as they normally do as long as it's 10 or less people. This morning, Bobby and I are the only two not wearing a mask at the present time, so we're still observing the six foot distance and the other safety things. Worship will continue the way we've been doing it, live stream Facebook and then recorded later, we're also using our large camera and putting it on our website as well as on our YouTube channel. We started putting our PowerPoint announcements on um, our website as well as on YouTube, and that gives a lot more in the way of announcements and things going on, as well as our sermon. I think that's about all I have to share before we start worship this morning. Being that it's Pentecost morning day, I invite you to wear red, the color of the day, uh, just to let you know that the Holy Spirit is here and with us. It's okay, you can do it when you go home. <laughs> we'll continue with the confession. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, 
by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our first hymn is This Is My Song. It's found normally in the red hymnal number 887, and the words will appear on the screen before you. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth.
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We will continue with the readings. Our first reading for today is found in the book of Acts. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Pentecost was a Jewish harvest festival that marked the 50th, 50th day after Passover. Luke portrays the Holy Spirit being poured out upon the disciples before they the gathered and astonished people assembled in Jerusalem for the festival. Filled with the Spirit, the disciples were able to witness to the power of Christ's resurrection. The reading begins. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave him ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And as this sound, at, and at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Figura, Figura, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will now do our psalm, Psalm 104. Uh, verses 24 through 34 and 35, where well, we read it responsively. How manifold are your works, O Lord! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There go the ships to and fro, and Leviathan, which you made for the sport of it. You give it to them, they gather it. Open 
you will open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You send forth your spirit, and they are created, and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. O Lord, rejoice in all your works. You look at the earth, and it trembles. You touch the mountains, and they smoke. May these words of mine please God, I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul. Hallelujah. Our second reading today is from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 12, verses 3 through 13. Paul is helping the Corinthians understand the relationship between our God-given unity and spirit-created diversity. The Spirit creates the unity of faith and gives all Christians diverse gifts for the common benefit of all. We need one another's diverse spiritual gifts because the same Spirit has given them to each person for the common good. The text begins. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To one another the working to one another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. And these are activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body Though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. According to the book of John. Glory to you, o Lord. The risen Christ appears to his disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. The text begins When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. You may be seated. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <coughs> Amen. From our second reading, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members are of one body, though many, we are one body. So it is with Christ, for in the one spirit we are all baptized 
into one body. For the past couple weeks, both in our readings for Sunday and in our Thursday Bible study, we have read and reread about the coming and the gift of the Holy Spirit. The primary purpose of these 40 post-resurrection days was Jesus telling and retelling the disciples that a power greater than himself was coming to guide and to lead them lead them into the future. A power in the form of breath, wind, fire, one that could go through locked doors, seek the lost, heal the sick, and bring new souls to Christ. And the day of Pentecost came with an outpouring of the Spirit, and the event described in our Acts reading an act that really nearly defies our imagination. And for a long time, the church did not know how to describe the Holy Spirit. Although they credited the formation of the church to its presence, it wasn't until the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD that theologian attempt to describe the Spirit in words for centuries, they used the term Holy Ghost until probably the 1970s, and the word ghost became associated with the occult. So we changed and used the word spirit, which is more reflective of life and breath, that within us, and not a surreal being like maybe Casper the Friendly Ghost. This past week, has been a week about thinking about the breath of life. And to watch the breath be crushed out of a young man and to feel the pain and the anguish of a pain of a community. It wasn't easy to watch the face of a person who was so detached from his actions that he didn't feel or realize the breath was leaving the person below his knee. I understand the protests and the rationale for them, and the right to peacefully protest is a freedom that is part of this country. But what the protests have evolved into is beyond mere protest. They have become an expression of rage, of a misguided anger, perpetuated by forces beyond the death of one black man. Riots destroy. They are not a freedom. They are part of the work of a lawless people and they serve no good purpose. It will take something much larger than a single protest to stop this destruction and the widespread rage that has arisen from all of the fuel that keeps getting put onto this fire. Before I address the events that are going on and how those flames possibly could be doused, I want to tell you a very true story about myself. I don't talk about my childhood very often, and when I do, it's because I want to share something very important with you. In 1963, I was seven years old. In the spring, I remember sitting on the couch with my mother. She was holding my baby sister, Patty, and we were watching our black and white TV and the news was on. I didn't understand what was happening and she tried to explain it to me from her own world view. And at that time, my mother was in her 20s, and she had lived her whole life in rural Tennessee. She had moved to Ohio in the 1950s when she had married my father. The small town she was from was home to about 2,000 people, and farming tobacco was the primary source of income. 
It had been a slave county, and most blacks still living there were called sharecroppers. They were allowed to live on the land for a percentage of the crop. They lived below poverty level. My mother explained to me that there was an etiquette system that all blacks had to follow because they were an inferior race. This was the 1950s. You see, in the South, they were really upfront about their prejudices. They didn't try to hide things. When you met a black person on the street, they were the ones that were to look down or cross the street, and you were to give them, they were to give you, rather, the right of way. There were drinking fountains and specially marked doors for them. There were black schools and white schools, and most of them didn't go beyond sixth grade. They sat at the back of the bus, they were the last in line, and they shopped only in certain stores. That's the way life was. And if you were white, you were on top and in charge. White superiority was an American right. There are still some people living in this country that believe that today. Anyway, my mother and I were sitting on the couch and we were watching all these protests for the civil rights going on. And all of a sudden the police took this really big fire hose and they started spraying people like they were cleaning the sidewalk. And I remember seeing children and pregnant women, and they screamed, and they cried. And that was on the news. I saw that, and as a seven-year-old, I didn't understand what was happening. And my mother said, the world is coming to an end. Black people demanding rights scared her. Later that year, the Civil Rights Bill started an 80-day-plus debate in Congress. Several civil rights leaders were murdered. I was reminded this morning by Joe that the space program started during that period of time, and we had a space liftoff yesterday that was a very positive event. But that year also, President Kennedy was assassinated. And the next time I sat with my mother on the couch, it was the day I was sent home early from school to watch the funeral of President Kennedy. And that day, my mother cried. And she said, the world is coming to an end. That year, there were civil rights protests and riots. Vietnam War, that assassination, and it felt like the world was coming to an end. And now here we are, 60 plus years later, and we find ourselves facing obstacles that are just as traumatic and just as daunting as they were in the 60s. The COVID virus has taken 100,000 lives and we are a nation in mourning. The economy has come to a standstill and the unemployment rate is close to 20%. One in five people in our country don't have a means of employment right now. And a lot of them are those that are on the street protesting and angry. And we have a racial problem. It's been lived out in the unjustified death at the hands of some law enforcement. So maybe it does seem like the world is coming to an end again. We can't stop and go to church or be with friends and family like the way we used to. This world is a hard place to be in right now. Lord, to whom shall we go? My 
dad used to be the one that helped me when I was a child, and he helped me to put things into perspective. I used to think that I might even be a journalist for a while and tell the stories of all those people I saw, experiencing all those things on the news. But I decided that wasn't a real safe thing to pursue. But my dad always said, get up, walk away, and deliberately take yourself and do something to break yourself away, away from all that negative thinking that you're stuck in. So as children, we would get up and we'd get dressed and we'd go to church. We'd go for a walk or we'd take a ride in the car, we'd visit a park, any small thing, yes, it was a mental escape from the problem, or at least the worries at hand. And as an adult, it still works, but now I have to rely more on my faith. I can pray, I can read, I can reconnect with God, even sometimes just sleep because sometimes it's when I realize that I'm weary it's because I'm tired and sleep does help and perhaps one of the best things any of us can do is to pray or talk with others because when you comfort others you find comfort yourself Seek peace and you find peace. The peace of the Holy Spirit. Jesus came among his disciples. They were behind a locked door. Perhaps it was just a door, a door in the mind of the disciples that was locked. It was a door that blocked them from seeing or feeling or experiencing the peace that Jesus had to offer. It was the peace that faith could bring them. Jesus came to them and said, peace be with you. And that was all it took for them to be reminded that the world was not coming to an end. Get up, do any small thing, and may the peace of God give you the strength to face tomorrow. Amen. Our hymn of the day is about the Holy Spirit. It's called Spirit of Gentleness.
Let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. Together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered death, and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is with the Father and the Son, is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Normally at this point we take our offering and we've extended our Wednesday office hour to accept offerings to 1 to 2.30. So if you'd like to drop them off at the church, otherwise our giving through our website, PayPal, credit card system is still open and will remain so. You can give through your bank, um, drop off your offering, or mail it by the postal service. All those options are available. We'll continue now with the offering hymn. but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name. In the strength of the risen Christ, amen. Before I start the prayers, I have a list of things I don't want to forget to pray for, so I'm going to actually read the list before I begin, because I think there's a lot of things on a lot of people's hearts and minds and I just don't want to leave anything out, so that's why I'm, I want to do this first. We are recognizing our Sunday school teachers today, and the list of them are in your bulletin, as well as our Sunday school students. Um, the teachers, Cindy Vasquez, Ann Werner, Todd and Jill Warseka, Jessica Pausch, Scott Burks, Brenda Danielson, and Myrna Sharpie, um, we have a small gift for them and certificates that they will be receiving. We have seniors that are graduating from high school that are going to have a little parade this afternoon. And we have here at the church for them their blankets and um, a small gift from the Board of Education. The church is going to be open. They are going to come later and get their pictures taken. We want to remember those who are unemployed because it's a significant part of our population. And certainly those who have been affected by the COVID virus. Um, we are very blessed not to have that directly in our community or anyone in our congregation, and we like to keep it that way. And certainly there are a huge number of Americans that are mourning 
There's a lot of people now seeking justice and equality, and there's a lot of people living in danger and harm. Even Sam Bullard, who has been called up, is in danger's way. So even the people living in Minneapolis and all the other major cities of this country right now. So there's a lot going on, and um, please keep all of these in your prayers in the coming week. Uplifted by the promise of healing and resurrection, we join with the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and for all in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate, activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they may reveal your love, Lord, for all people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We, we call on your spirit of life, present in the air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy and life into all things. Heal with your breath all of creation, especially those who struggle to breathe in any way. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, hospice workers, emergency care workers, paramedics, our police force, paramedics, National Guard. Bless them as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort. And we pray for those who are ill, especially we remember all of those on our prayer list. Lord, in your mercy, we call on your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary to her home, give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet. Surprise us daily with your unexpected grace, that we may rejoice in every blessing that you send us. Lord, in your mercy, we call on your spirit of hope. As you have fed your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow your example, leading us from death to new life in you. And with bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray the way our Savior taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to do the final blessing, um, and then before we begin the hymn, I have just one more comment to make. Oh, I guess we're at an hour. <laughs> um, receive God's blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning to dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. This final hymn, Board of Music, Worship of Music, chose this three months ago, and in error, we thought this weekend was Memorial Day weekend. So all of our hymns we chose with the idea that this was a holiday weekend. And when I saw that this was the closing hymn for today, I just smiled because this is the way the Holy Spirit works. What an appropriate hymn for unity we sing on this day as our country 
is in turmoil, we will sing, My Country Tis of Thee, as our closing hymn. Ah, the words will appear before you. And Paul, Bobette will play it on the organ. <laughs>